Hey, Redcon Raider here, and welcome back to Pathfinder, Wrath of the Righteous. As today, we rush back to Dresden, ring up Derek Sunhammer, and investigate the facets of his sinister plot. Though, uh, that said, I, I'm fairly certain this will end on a cliffhanger. My understanding is that all of the companion quests conclude in Act 5, but I guess we'll find out. Onward, my friends! Everyone just collapsed, and then the demons appeared. Wake up! Please, wake up! Sela is standing with her weapon drawn, her eyes ablaze. Have you seen the bodies in the streets? I'd bet anything this is the doing of our jeweler. Let's go to his shop quickly, if you're ready. Right, let's go. Damn it! Damn demons! Commander, Sela, praise Abadar you're alive! The usually dignified Arsino struggles to catch her breath after running, and she says, nervously clenching her hands, I have received news from other temples of Abadar, most disturbing news. What we saw at Alang and Kiana's wedding has been happening across Mendev. People who bought Derek Sunhammer's jewelry have been dropping to the ground, lifeless, with demons emerging from their bodies. The damage done is hard to measure. Demons appeared in a hundred locations, and many of them immediately used the turmoil to commit atrocities. Killing, stealing, wreaking wanton destruction. Some were quickly dealt with, the cursed jewelry taken from them, and the imprisoned souls freed. But most of the demons fled taking the jewelry containing the souls of their poor victims with them. Garrick Sunhammer himself escaped too. The Inquisition of the Church of Iomede is searching for him, but they have no leads as yet. The Church of Abadar is doing whatever it can. We also suffered losses among both our congregation and our clergy. Arsinoe shakes her head sadly. Such a devious plot and how skillfully it was executed. As Arsino speaks, Sela's face grows more and more grim, and her hands clench anxiously around her weapon. I saw that scumbag right here. I even talked to him. I didn't suspect a thing. I often get a sickening feeling from traitors. Some of them are nasty pieces of work, the way they rip people off. I got that same feeling from him but I didn't even think of looking closer. If we can't get that jewelry back, what happens to the people whose souls were stolen? Several large churches in Mendev have taken the victims into their care. The priests will keep their bodies alive and well, but unless the jewelry is found and their souls returned, all these efforts will be for naught. I just don't get it. Sunhammer must have spent years setting this all up. Why, why tip his hand now? It's not clear, but he's been the most famous jeweler in Mendev for several years now. He counted many influential persons or their relatives among his clients. Nobility, generals, priests, merchants. They, their children, or their loved ones are now only lifeless bodies. Their souls stolen away and hidden who knows where. The possibilities for blackmail and sowing blind panic are limitless. I suppose the Inquisition and the Mendevian authorities will try to keep the situation under control, but it is still extremely dangerous. How did no one else realize this was going on? I met the guy once and immediately figured out that he was up to something. Magic, Knight Commander and highly sophisticated magic at that. The jewelry items were well protected, and no one detected the demons hiding in them. If we assume that Derek Sunhammer not only made the jewelry, but also charmed the items, we must conclude that he is an incredibly powerful and skilled spellcaster. 
Do we have to round up all of these Sunhammer specials? Is there a demon in every one of them? Not all of it. The Inquisition combed through everything. Most of what was sold in Sunhammer's shops was perfectly ordinary. The demon jewelry was sold to a select few, and always by Sunhammer directly, not through his golems. It is clear that he targeted his victims deliberately. I see. So what now? That is all I can tell you. I hope I've been helpful. If it's within your power, help track down Sunhammer and the Stolen Souls, Commander. This chaos must be stopped. Arsenault bows to you and leaves. Sela sheathes her weapon angrily and sucks in a breath through her teeth. But then she seems to steady herself and looks at you, her eyes bright. Well, what do you know? Looks like we got ourselves tangled up in some demonic conspiracy. I'm so glad you came to the wedding with me, and that we managed to find out what happened. Because otherwise, Sela the Dimwit would have come alone, given the bride a ring with a surprise demon inside, and would have failed miserably when she tried to help. I mean, you noticed something was wrong too. And it's not like it was me who ran up and smashed their wedding ring before she could put it on. At least I saved her, right? Good to know I'm not entirely useless. Ha. Huh. Grim determination burns in Sela's eyes. I can't leave it like this. If anyone has an obligation to find that low-life sun hammer and return all the stolen souls, it's me. I'll do everything in my power to find him. Something tells me that the demon collaborating scumbag is somewhere here in the world wound. I'll seek help from every quarter. I'll interrogate imprisoned demons and cultists. Whatever it takes to get to the truth. And I guess that's it. Yep, unsurprisingly it did indeed leave off on a cliffhanger. Derek Sunhammer's in the wind. We have several soulless victims just waiting to be rescued. Which I'm sure I'll wrap up in Act 5. I was hoping we'd milk at least one more fight out of this, but... But apparently that golem was set on self-destruct. One last middle finger from Sunhammer on his way out, I suppose. We don't even get the XP for that. Anyway, let's uh, go do some quick follow-up. We'll chat up Sela, Arsino, Alon if he's still kicking around. And uh, then we'll figure out where we're going from there. Good days and clear skies. What do you say? Where are we off to today? Uh, I was actually thinking you might just cool your heels and dress in for a while. You know, clear your head, but... But how are you doing? What does it matter how I am? I can't stop thinking about everyone who suffered. Clever Sela, the paladin, companion of the god's chosen one, didn't even notice a demon conspiracy right under her nose. I'm going to officially change my name to Sela the Dimwit. That's how I'll introduce myself to everyone I meet, so that they know they can't count on me. Sela chuckles grimly, then adds in a softer, more serious tone. If we're too late to save the souls of all those victims, I will never forgive myself. You know what else I keep thinking about? What happened to Curl? Did he really want to steal the ring? Did he just get what was coming to him? Or was it the fault of the demon who possessed his body? So many questions and so much grief. As if a whole world wound and two demon lords out there just waiting to hurt us wasn't enough. Yeah, I hear you. But, uh, hey, one day at a time, right? Sela smiles. Yeah, see ya. All right, well, let's go check on Alon. Commander? 
My regards. Uh, you too, Elan. Keep up the good work. And arson out. And then that should be it for this quest. Though, uh, we do have to chat with one other person while we're out here. How can I help you? Any news about the uh, folks who got sun hammered? No, but believe me, I am not going to leave this alone. This is a serious crime, one that happened right under my nose. I consider it a personal insult and am willing to help Elan and everyone involved. Every day I spend some time trying to find the stolen souls with prayers and divine magic. My search has brought no results yet, but as soon as it does, I will let you know. Right, right, okay. So I'm guessing she's the one who will let us know once the next stage of the quest is ready, ready to pursue. Okay, let's have a quick chat with Arushale. We never did follow up with her after the, the nightmare scenario. Then we'll get back to crusading. Arushale looks at you and smiles sadly without saying a word. Hey, Ruru. I'm real sorry your dream turned out the way it did. Hope that wasn't me. I mean, I do have a way of turning dreams into nightmares. Don't be sorry for me. It's all a part of my journey, and it would be very naive to imagine my path to redemption as a sequence of pleasant dreams only. I've already described my countless evil deeds to you. Mortals suffer from nightmares born of their past. And I am glad that I had a chance to experience them as well. Okay. that That's a healthy way to look at it, I guess. So, uh, who was that? Please don't ask. I don't want to be reminded of it. I knew him in the past, and I was hoping that he would never reappear in my life. We both caused each other a lot of pain. Please, don't make me relive it all again. Sure, sure. But, but I've got to ask. Why did he call you his venomous butterfly? Arushle doesn't look you in the eye. I poisoned him. My lies, my capriciousness, my temptation. No, I can't. Let's talk about something else. I'm sorry, but I, I don't want to remember who I used to be and what I used to do to others. Okay, sorry. Another time, perhaps. All right, well, that was fun. <laughs> I mean, obviously, we're going to have to deal with that at some point, but again, again, all of these companion quests are, are spread out over all five acts of the game. So, I'm sure it'll pop up again soon enough. Act four, maybe act five. We'll see if there's any new events to uh, poke at, and if not, we'll, uh, we'll maybe pass a day or two. See if we can shake something loose. No new events. Oh, right, but I was in the middle of shuffling our armies around, moving up reinforcements and such. Uh, yeah, let me, let me take care of that real quick. This way you'll get a gander at where our armies currently stand. Not that we'll actually need them again until Act 5, I think. I do want to start stockpiling beer golems, now that we can actually make those. Once we've, uh, once we've built up a decent stack of a dozen or so at least, I might phase the duelists out of our main crew and swap in the golems.
Okay, here we go. We'll pass two days. No new events. We'll just finish moving Agaboya's crew real quick. And that's two. Oh, hey, and here we go. New event. Collared Crusaders. A Chalaxian lord with an escort of battle slaves wishes to join the crusade. But many crusaders loathe slavery. They are asking the commander to free the thralls and banish the outlander. Oof. Well, this one should be easy. Um, based on the way I've been playing him, I can't really see Vex taking much of a shine to slavery. Especially when it's just a stack of four. And we're unlikely to ever unlock that unit. Of course, burning our diplomacy isn't really ideal either. And then obviously we can't do that last one. We're not in Azada. One of the quests we do still have lingering right now is to max out all four of our kingdom stats. We're okay on diplomacy for now, but there's no real benefit to us burning it if we don't have to. It's not like the reward for burning it is proportionate. And we've got gold to spare, so, I mean, yeah, yeah. We'll just buy them. Preserve our alliance, but still do some good. The freed slaves went to Mendev in search of a new home. The soldiers were inspired by the commander's generosity. Neat. So we basically got nothing out of that event, because our morale was already maxed. But at least we got it out of the queue. That clears the way for other potential events. We do need to boost military and logistics, though, so I'll I'll take a look at that between episodes. See if we can build some new stuff in our outposts, maybe. Okay, well, no new events here either, so we've got a half hour to burn. Let's hit the Midnight Isles, maybe clear another island or two. Oh, uh, scratch that. The Isles will have to wait. Hold up, Commander. The thing is, remember how that Crusader went missing a while back and then he was found outside the city walls, disemboweled? Anevia pauses and gives you a searching look. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I think I remember that. What, did you find something new? It wasn't just Kaz, was it? No, uh, nothing yet. Anevia seems to scrutinize your face again and then nods to herself. But I never gave up on the investigation, even when everybody else stopped digging. I know we're at war and that people are dying left and right, but that's no reason to turn a blind eye to crime. So, that's it, Commander. Another Crusader has just gone missing. He left the barracks to come here. He would have gone past the gates. My gut tells me that the killer won't keep him alive for long. So, Commander, you need to start searching this area right now, and try to find out where he's been taken. Uh, sure, yeah, I could do that. This is just very... sudden. Death often shows up when you least expect it. It's not like I picked the timing. Right, yeah, of course. So, uh, who went missing? Anyone I know? Eh, he's the youngest son of a poor nobleman from Mendev. He's called something like Rillic or Rillac. He's young, barely out of the nursery. And he decided that he was a man now, so off to war he went. You know how it goes. Anevia, do you, uh, do you already know who the murderer is? 
I don't have a clue. Anevia's answer comes too quickly, her gaze dropping before she can force herself to meet your eyes. What are you not telling me? I'm telling you the truth, and nothing but the truth. I have my own theory, sure, but nothing concrete. So it's best if I keep my mouth shut on that front. Okay, sure, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll go looking for our missing relic or relic or relac. The guy you're so concerned about and yet don't know the name of. Get going, then. He passed the gates and took a right. Ask around, check out the buildings. I'll be waiting for you here. To the right, huh? So you even know what direction he headed in. Well, there's only two buildings over there that we can actually enter, so this will be quick. Not seeing anyone we can actually talk to. Yeah, we've got the abandoned building over there. And we've got this house over here. Just waiting on Kaz. House looks clear. We've got a basement. Also clear. So it's got to be the abandoned building then. man's clothes are heaped on the floor. They were taken off in a hurry. The thick layer of dust, laying untouched on the table for years, has been wiped away in the middle of the tabletop. Ah, right. Things are about to get awkward, I think. Flashbacks to our uh, final episode of the Baldur's Gate EA series. Final for now. Might might still touch on it again. Kaz? Okay, guess we're doing this solo. You can hear muffled sighs coming from the next room. And we can see a corpse. In our mind's eye. So, I mean... Still awkward, just not the same kind of awkward. How lovely to see you here. Of course. Hearing steps behind her, Camellia whips around and freezes. She glances at the bloody dagger in her hand, then at the dead body at her feet. She speaks evenly, her lips quiver for a fraction of a second, before settling into an unimpeachably polite smile. Cam? I can't help but notice that man is slightly dead. Socorus is an ancient land. The spirits of these places have spoken to people since time immemorial, and some of those people heard them and were able to respond. The shamans of Socorus were always held in high esteem. They knew the will of the spirits, the will of the land itself. Many Kelids would come to the shamans to learn what the spirits desired in order to gain their support. Camellia pauses, lost in memories that cannot be her own. Uh huh. When the world wound opened and the demons poured into Galarian, they drowned Socorus in blood. The earth moaned as it soaked up the blood of Kelids, Crusaders, and demons. The spirits drank this blood, 
slowly becoming deranged and turning into incarnations of madness and pain. Look what Sarkoris has turned into. It's an open wound on the body of Galarian. The world wound has changed it beyond all recognition. And the spirits, these poor creatures have been corrupted. Twisted by war, they moan and they howl, but only shamans can hear their senseless cries of agony. I am a shaman. Morea, the spirit I am bonded with, is mad and can speak of nothing but her endless hunger for blood. I give her what she asks for. I feed her the blood of crusaders. Camellia seems suddenly to falter. Her breathing grows heavy and her pupils dilate. That's probably normal. The spirits of Sikoris can no longer speak to shamans. All I can hear is the cacophony of their howls, screams, and laments. But there is a way to restore their sanity. By performing rituals. Bloody but effective rituals. When the untainted blood of the Crusaders cleanses the corruption that Maria fed on for centuries, the spirit will regain her sanity and I shall be able to speak to her. I shall be able to ask her advice, to find out how we can heal the world wound. Tell me, isn't this knowledge worth a handful of lives? Yeah, just uh, how big is this handful we're talking about here? This clearly isn't your first victim. How many Crusaders have you killed? Too few. Maria's hunger is still so great. Her pain cannot be soothed by a single victim. But success is within my grasp. I can feel it. It is even possible that today's victim will be the last. Camellia lifts her chin, seeming hesitant for a moment. But then she raises her eyes and her voice gains a hard edge. Uh, look, Cam, I'm trying to give you the benefit of the doubt here, but, um... Okay, who, who's this Maria? What makes her so important? Forgive me, I forgot to make the introductions. This is Maria. Or rather, this is her home. Or her prison, to call a spade a spade. The girl removes an amulet in the shape of a bone snake from around her neck. Right, the amulet. I guess that tracks? I caught this spirit a long time ago, and I tried for so long to speak with it. My little demented ball of rage. I felt compelled to bind it to this amulet, just temporarily, until I worked out how to help it. <sighs> Camellia sighs, sadly. If I am to be fully honest, her name... Maria is of my own devising. She is not yet able to speak to me, but I still needed a name to call her by. The girl gently puts the amulet back around her neck. Okay, so you can't actually communicate with her. Why do you think this method will work? I do not think. I know. I sense things many people cannot. I can infer what the spirits want. For example, there is one spirit hanging over your left shoulder as we speak. It came to enjoy Morea's victim. Can you sense its hunger? <laughs> yeah, you're really not making yourself any less creepy right now, Cam. Spirits are akin to animals. You cannot bring a hungry dog to heal. You cannot stroke a hungry cat. To speak to a spirit, you must first feed it. It is not their fault that after so many years of torment, the only thing that can satisfy their hunger is blood. My ritual will work. I did not read about it in books or learn it from some wizened teacher. You could say that I invented it myself, with Morea's help. I just know that it will work, sooner or later. I can feel it. Amelia's expression grows serious. 
Okay, so, so what exactly are you trying to accomplish with that nameless, insane spirit you strapped to your neck? The World Wound cannot be allowed to poison all the lands of Galarian. The spirits of Socorus know this better even than you and I. They may know how to heal it. And if not, then perhaps they will know how to eradicate it quickly and painlessly. We're fighting against demons. It is a just cause. But imagine we win and the demons vanish for good. Do you think the World Wound will vanish along with them? That it's something we can defeat with weapons? That it won't burst open again at some point in the future like an old festering abscess? I am thinking of the future of these lands, of how to heal them and restore them. Would you not agree that a few Crusaders' lives is a price worth paying? Camellia shakes her head. Yeah, it's just, you know, uh, I'm not really buying it. I mean, I hear what you're saying, and some of it kind of makes sense, but you're really not doing a great job of selling me on this. That is your right. Just as a mole has the right not to believe in the existence of the sun, a butterfly has the right not to believe in summer, an infant has the right not to believe in death, I have revealed the truth to you. You are free to reject it if you wish. Camellia gives an indifferent shrug, but contempt flashes in her eyes. So who is this guy? The guy you just fed to Morea. He's the youngest son of a noble from Mendiv. I believe his name was... Rillic? Or Relic? I think the Dolt was in love with me. He was ever so eager to come with me to this house. One hint was all it took. Camellia looks at the body in surprise, as if she's seeing it for the first time. He is of no interest to me. Morea wanted his blood, so I sacrificed him. The rest is immaterial. Okay, so let's say I've been hit in the head too many times and I actually buy into this. What, what exactly are you proposing? My ritual is not yet complete. I have made the sacrifice. Now I just have to let Maria drink the blood. Will... Will you allow me to complete the ritual? Gamalia licks her lips and takes a small, almost meek, step forward. Uh, sure. Yeah, you know, why not? Guy's not gonna get any less dead. I would like to see how this actually works. Thank you. This will not take long. Camellia wets her lips. When she lowers herself to her knees before the body, you see that her legs are quaking. But her deportment remains as impeccable as ever. Accept this sacrifice, Morea. Drink of its blood. Drink of its strength. Drink of its life. Camellia lowers the amulet into the open chest cavity of the Crusader, then raises the amulet above her head. Blood drips from the snake's head onto the girl's expectant tongue. We are one, you and I. Our thoughts, our bodies, our souls. What you take in, I take in also. Camellia deftly spears a small piece of the Crusader's flesh on the tip of her dagger and deposits it in her mouth. Her eyes drift shut in ecstasy, and a shudder travels the length of her body. Wow. Gross. Have I shocked you? I do so love to shock people. <clears throat> anyway, it was necessary for the ritual. Camellia laughs. A trickle of blood escapes from the corner of her mouth. With deliberate slowness, she captures the stray drop with her tongue. I feel like you might be getting a little too into this. I mean, look, I'm no prude, but I, I have concerns. Mm. Is it wrong to love what one does? Don't you like killing demons in the name of goodness, justice, or whatever it is you're fighting for? 
Do you not experience pleasure when your weapon plunges into the enemy's flesh? When you look in his eyes and you see the awareness fade away? The girl's eyes fall shut. Yeah, I do, but now I kind of like it less. Also, I don't eat them. Or bang them, mostly. Have you ever watched a heart stop in an open chest and known that you were the cause? Have you ever held someone on the very brink of death? When your victim's strength is fading with every second before it fades utterly and the only evidence of your duel will be the bruise on your wrist left by his failing grip. Camellia studies her blood-stained hands. A shaky sigh emerges from her chest. I enjoy what I do. However, my preferences are nothing compared with Morea's appetites. We are quite lucky that our desires align at all. After a moment, her eyes snap up to meet yours. Cool. So, uh, did it work? Is Maria sane now? Yes and no. I think I made out a few clear words from Maria before the madness swallowed her again. Camellia's attention seems to turn inward, and she lays a hand on the amulet resting on her chest. She stumbles slightly, as though tipsy. I'm on the right path. More rituals are needed. Not many, not more than ten or twenty, I should think. Will you allow me to continue my work? Camellia nods to herself. Oh, cool. So just ten or twenty more... murdered crusaders to get more than just garbled words out of your imaginary friend there. Ah, uh, you know... That is a tempting offer, but given that you have provided me exactly zero proof of anything that you're saying, aside from the fact that you kill and eat people, I'm gonna go with... No. But it was tempting. Uh, it was like a... Well, no, it wasn't. I was just trying to make you feel better. I tell you what, stop murdering people and we'll just forget this whole thing happened. You can find some other way to help your... your friend there. One time offer, and it's only because I like helpful. What a pain. But if these are your terms, then I agree. Irritation flits across Camellia's face but is quickly replaced by humility. There is one more thing. Commander, my ritual is quite a taxing process. The strain is difficult to bear. Sex is the best way to relieve the tension once it is all over. Camellia draws in a breath and licks her lips. Help me. I need you. Here. Now. The girl's body is trembling violently. She gazes into your eyes, looking almost manic. Oh, wow, yeah, this... Again, tempting. Very, very tempting. But, you know, I'm all tuckered out from... The wedding, and, uh... I haven't fed Kaz yet, and I have so many other places to be that aren't here right now. <laughs> but, but rain check, rain check. Next time, for sure. I gotta go. What a pity. I shall have to find myself another willing victim this night. The girl's breathing slowly evens out. Ah, so... Still... still looking for victims, huh? <laughs> you know, when I saw you standing there, I thought my life would end tonight, but you spared me. Thank you. I would like to speak with you a little later. Please come and see me. No need to be shy, for I have no more secrets to keep from you. 
Now, we should leave this place. You go first. I will follow in a few minutes. Yes, yes, uh, that is an excellent idea. I'll, I'll leave first. You stay here with the corpse. And uh, I'll see you around. Yeah, yeah, look, I mean, Vex is, uh, Vex is a bit of a hedonist, but I don't think it's ever a good idea to sleep with crazy. Especially not someone who has a history of killing and eating the people she sleeps with. I feel like that's a bit of a warning sign, but maybe that's just me. Hey, helpful. Come on, Kaz. Anevia stretches lazily and yawns, but her eyes are fixed on you. Well, Commander, have you solved the problem? Yeah, about that. What exactly do you know about these... these killings? Killings? What killings? Anevia says with a smirk before becoming deadly serious. Listen, Commander, I was just using my brain, following certain individuals, listening to what people were saying on the street. I had my suspicions. But what are suspicions worth? On their own? Nothing. I didn't have any proof. I'm not Erebeth. I'm not going to go digging for the truth. Because if I dug deep enough, the Knight Commander would be down a companion. Smack bang in the middle of a war. How would that help anything? I'm not going to be the one to scupper this crusade, so I'll be keeping my mouth shut. Anevia speaks slowly, staring into your eyes. I trust that you'll handle this in whatever way's best for the crusade. If you want to tell Erebeth everything, go ahead. It's your call. Oof. <laughs> you know, on the one hand... On the one hand, it goes against my nature to kill potential companions. That is that is why I have been so lenient with Wenduag, because I keep hoping she'll come around. Though I guess there are some weird parallels there, because she did, in fact, kill and eat someone. Yeah, let, let's, you know what, let's not make that mistake again. Killer's inside. Do what you gotta. Don't let her get away. Anevia chuckles darkly. If that's your decision, then gladly. That was a well-timed bell. Oh, I forgot to take her gear. Hold on. Might as well verify the kill anyway. Oh, helpful, sweetie. I'm sorry, baby. But look, she's... she was no good for you. What? Why don't you, um... Why don't you go... hang out with Darren? We'll, uh, we'll go out for walksies soon, okay? You'll forget all about her, and you'll be better off for it, I promise. Darren will take good care of you. And surprise, surprise, this is not, in fact, an amulet containing a wild spirit. It is an amulet of conceal alignment. That certainly tracks. Goodbye, Cam. It's been fun. I'm really not going to miss you. But, you know, we, uh, we really should go have words with Horgus. Orgus, uh, you know, there's, there's really no easy way to say this, but we, we've got to talk, buddy. I heard that you, that Camellia is gone. Orgus stands with his head lowered. His shoulders tremble slightly, but his voice is firm. 
I... I understand, and I don't blame you. Camellia's been walking on a knife's edge for a long time. She has no one to blame but herself. But tonight... Tonight, I shall get tremendously drunk. Please leave me, Knight Commander. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry for your loss, I guess. Even though your brief comments there did kind of imply that you knew she was killing people. We're, uh, we're gonna have words with him again later. Just, uh, we'll just give him some space for now. Man, this was, uh, this was kind of a bummer of an episode. No closure on the, the wedding quest. And then this. Though on the bright side, no more Cam to deal with. I mean, I, I guess I can't really complain about that. Especially since from some of her chatter, I think she had actually set her sights on offing Darren at some point. And, you know, if I have to choose between Darren and Cam, it's going to be Darren every time. For many reasons. That said, uh, it does suck to lose a companion, as well as all of her associated story threads, but hey, on the bright side, new companion DLC drops in two weeks. That said, uh, we'll hit the pause button for now. I'm going to take some time to sort of unpack everything we just went through, do a little bookkeeping, and hey, let me know what you guys think about all this as well. I'm, I'm very curious. I'm assuming most people are going to be in my corner on that decision, but um, I... Certainly wouldn't mind hearing opinions to the contrary. <laughs> Either way, see you next time. Oh, and special thanks to the Raiders, the fine folks who help make these videos possible, including but not limited to Dragon Matrix 7, Matthew Smith, Revenant, Aloise, Dracith, Eerie V23, Egon Alter, Emil, Excelsior, Goatleib, James Tremay, Kazorm, Mark Diemza, Nathan Welch Jr., Overlord Ferrum, Random Passerby, Robbie B., Thomas Fietkowski, Trip Hop and Skip, and Val and Rug. Thanks for your support, guys. That said, if you'd also like to help support the channel, then feel free to push the buttons that do the things. Trust me, it does make a difference. Or you could even check out the Patreon, the PayPal, the Nexus GG page, or the YouTube memberships. Links are in the description. What a pain. But if these are your terms, then I agree. Can you sense its hunger? 